But personal growth, um, when you look at that, if if you, you know, if you consider other avenues of personal growth, they're usually not that pleasant, right? So in general, the purpose of personal growth, um, in its very definition, if you believe in personal growth, means that uh, you're going to um, be in moments of increased pressure that will either cause you to break or grow. Right? That's what personal growth is about. Right? How uh, The motivations for personal growth can be anywhere from really healthy to really fucked up. Right? So when you come from a place of, I'm not good enough and hence I need to grow, that's a battle you can never win. You know, you can do Tony Robbins, whatever, the Platinum Club and, and you know, do your daily affirmations and do your whatever. What are those workouts called? PX something, yeah, whatever, you know, those things. And then you can, like, uh, pray and then you'll do your lists and then you follow the time management and then you have your coaching call. And, you know, you're never going to feel better because there's intrinsically something wrong with the with the orientation of personal growth right that's the that's the very one end the other end is that you are intrinsically interested in your development human development and skill development service. and hmm? and service and service right and so you um, develop yourself for the sake of others for the sake of your best self for the sake of you know why not essentially. So that's the full spectrum of personal growth. But nowhere on that spectrum is it pleasant. Really, right? So when your um, idea of relationship changes because maybe you've had enough personal growth for the time being or you've worn yourself out and there's only so much a, a human can do till they need some break or some rest because you wouldn't do personal growth every day all day uh, in, in any other domain right uh, you wouldn't work out every day all day uh, or you know acquire a new skill every day all day so if your idea of a purpose in a relationship changes but hers doesn't then you become incompatible uh, that's one of the things that can happen where you go, well, I'd actually just like a little bit of fun and an easy time and I'd like it pleasant and would like to come home and not have to work. And, <laughs> and maybe I'd like to catch a breath ever so often and the night's sleep without waiting for the next upset, right? So, so at that point, you, and if she goes, yeah, well, that would be nice. I think that would be lovely. Uh, I don't know how we'll do that, but I'm up for that. Then you'd go and do some relationship counseling or something and figure out how can you create peace and breath and you know all of that kind of stuff. If that's possible, great. If not, then you'll break up. Right? But if she says, no, I like this, or demonstrates that she likes it, even though she might say that she doesn't, and you are done, then that's one consideration. Right? However, the other consideration is that if you've entered a relationship for the sake of personal growth, like I was asking you somewhat in jest earlier, or if you're a masochist, right, there is a bit of that in there. You have to look at why have you chosen a woman who is that difficult to deal with, right? And I'm sure we could find the answer probably in your upbringing somewhere. That's usually how it goes. We pick people who replicate the patterns of our childhood. And so now you can look at the fact that you are probably seeking love the way you received love as a child, which is probably through conflict. And somebody nagging and being, you know, demanding things of you that you maybe can bring but don't really want to bring you always feel a little bit bad and insufficient so you need to grow a little bit more you know all of that and that's a losing battle because as long as you engage in that you're going to be stuck in that particular pattern and there's no pushing through 